Attitude is everything, dude. Hello, everybody out there in Rider Nation. How's everybody feeling after that loss yet last night? I know I was hopping mad. It's a game that I didn't really expect to win, but we should have won. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I was so mad at Coach Dickinson. I just don't understand some of his play callings. He's just got me fooled. I stood behind him a lot, but uh, last night's game, I was so mad they could fire him anytime. And then you have thoughts after about, sure, fire him, but who the hell do you get? You know, if you're going to fire him, you should have fired him at the first of the season. It's too late now. Way too late. I'm not one for changing coaches mid-season. I mean, probably the only option is move him down to be a special teams coordinator like he was. He seems to think special teams can win the game for him, a.k.a. the short kick. And instead of kicking it down deep with a minute and 59 seconds, he decides to try one of his short kicks. Special teams coach, that's what he should be. But the only option is move him to special teams like he wants to be anyway, seems. <coughs> and uh, put Shivers up there. Can't put Jeffries. I'm not much of a fan of his after last night's game either. Just some unbelievable calls. Second and fives. We need to get down the field and get a touchdown. Yeah, he calls another one tomorrow and uh, just nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, he even looked, I'll show that one later. I'm gonna have to make another video on this game. Uh, I had a little bit of a look at it this morning, but I know a lot of them running uh, plays were run pass option plays like the one near the end of the game there when they're down near the end zone and uh, the, He handed it off back tomorrow again and got stuffed big time It was uh, That was a run pass option play as far as I could tell even the offensive line didn't block like it was a straight running play. Uh, they were playing more in between, not blasting out at the other side. And uh, when you, I looked at it a little bit, it was there. Peter faked it tomorrow, and uh, the defensive uh, corners were playing way off our our wide receivers. Either side, he could have just faked tomorrow, flicked it out to one of those guys, and easily picked up a first down. <coughs> that being if he caught it. But, uh, and even all he had to do is beat one guy and he'd been in the end zone. So, that could have been an inexperienced young quarterback problem. Yeah, Dickinson's challenge early in the game on, on Evans where they got him in the end zone there. That was a massive, massive uh, momentum switcher. I know it's early, but it was a good challenge to do it because I agree with Dickinson 100%. Like, let these guys play. Like, Evans ducked down. He ends up getting around the top of his body. And if you want to call something like that, we could have saved that challenge for the end there. Like when Fine went down there and he ripped his helmet right off his head. No flag. No flag for that one. And we get flagged for something like what we did, which was way less severe, as far as I'm concerned. What I didn't really like about that call challenge was he just called that too early. It's really dangerous to call a uh, challenge so early and lose it and then you lose it for the rest of the game 
and your timeout situations and it's a little early and with that kind of call they very seldom turn those around against the referee especially the head referee you know it's like your buddy telling you they've got their buddies in the command center that were probably the referees in the first place and uh that's saying hey you didn't make the right call we'll have to reverse it and that doesn't happen very often that's for sure on the first time that uh they uh, Fine's helmet came flying off that one there he got hit so hard his helmet did fly off he's got to get a tighter string strap but you know he went down really hard and if you look real close there his eyes were rolled right back in his head basically I thought maybe they're gonna yank him and uh, make him go through percu uh, concussion protocol because he took some wicked hits and you gotta take you gotta give it to the kid he stood in there a lot of times and took some licks and uh kept on going but he got rattled a few times that might have caused why he was a bit flustered and not making the right decisions it was a hard thing for him to get in there but the only way you learn in this league is by playing there were so many controversial decisions in this game and some I sort of agreed with and some I just really disagreed with. Especially when got a minute 59 there and he tries a short kick. He even tried one of those onside kicks. Turned out it worked but it was a bloody fluke where they recovered it in a fumble in the end. Use got his first fumble recovery but in that situation I'm more defensive minded I would have kicked that one down and uh, and uh, got them deep as we possibly could and hope we could stop them before they got a first down then we would have had a chance but ahead of that man you know like going for it early there third and two stop dead like again i'm gonna have to go back and that uh, rider's got a squirrel over there again you got one ride way to go rider you're doing your job come on buddy let's go i'll put a tape out a little later like and subscribe this video and i'll go back and uh get some plays on, of what went on here as much as I can tell anyway I know I'm no coach but I still see things that I just are not right just are not right you know blocking schemes like even fine he did pretty good you know like I give a guy another chance Toronto will be another tough game because they're no weaker than BC on defense and uh, they got a really good offense but if our defense can play like they did this game we're gonna chase Kelly around too in the pocket yeah well that being said too our defense is getting even thinner and thinner too now we lost Cox we had to put a one-time guy in there Canadian and he did held up pretty good that Cote guy but he held up pretty good but you know they're gonna have to go to the practice roster now like the only guy that was Roscoe and uh, at least they got a couple guys there where we lost Picton too and that was a play that I'm gonna have to go look back at again well, I remember it looked like it was a bloody late hit on him. He ended up going off with a concussion. And then another big loss is Dulkey. They had to yank him out because of shoulder. And shoulder, that's a major for a defensive back. You know, especially a safety. He's always coming up and laying licks on guys. 
and he will be un unable to do it. So defensively, getting depleted too. I know we got a ton of injuries, but you can't really say that because a lot of teams get in the same situation. I'll go, I'll harp on it again, the, protecting the quarterback. I'm still pissed off, that was a bad call. You know, how else is Christmas gonna tackle the guy? Just unbelievable call. And a big momentum switcher. But Jeffries, Jeffries, his play calling, you could even tell he was just shaking his head. I'll put that one up too. When he he's plays a running play and he looks up into the sky, say, why did I call that? Like, I don't know why they didn't abandon that, handing it off tomorrow and play a little bit more of that, get him out and open the territory. They did that against Calgary and had good success. They didn't have that play in the, in the playbook this week. I don't know what they're afraid of. They just didn't trust Mason Fine, I don't think. They played too conservative. Too conservative. One other thing I could never, couldn't figure out either was, why keep handing that ball off tomorrow when we got another running back in Hickson? To me, what I saw both running backs, I love that we had these one-two punch, but we're not using that one-two punch at all. You know, like Hicks, uh, Morrow is more of a scat back in and out, does some blasting, but he's more of a jump this way, go that way kind of back, which he didn't do this game. But Hickson's more of a basher. He runs north and south and no uh, butts about it. He'll put his head down and ram his way in. You know, and that's the kind of guy you need in the second and short. Anyway, I have to go back and look at because there was a lot of those ones that were were run pass option plays and fine still handed the ball off. I'll show you the one I can remember. There's seven guys in the box, all on the line of scrimmage, and they still try to hand the ball off and go straight forward. Impossible! Those BC guys were stopping them dead. You know, you had to try different options than that. It was a play that was destined for disaster. And Dickie's decision still pisses me off at the end there. You know, he goes, ah, oh, the defense was worn out. I didn't trust them to stop, stop him at the end there. Well, that's a lot of confidence too. A lot of truth to it too though. Defense do get worn out at the end. But I still would have, they'd have been hyped up to try to stop him. Of course, you know, you say, if we would have recovered the ball, it would have been a wonderful decision. But the odds tell me, kick it deep. At the end of the game is why I was so mad. When he's uh, down at the goal, we're down at the goal line and the sequence of play calling and decisions. Like we had a chance to kick the field goal early. I think there would have been a, a little more than three minutes left to play, which is an eternity in the CFL, and uh, kicked the field goal early. Now we're down to one score, and maybe we can tie the game. It's a game we should have really won. I was going, wow, we've knocked out uh, Adams right away. Evans comes in, and he played pretty good. He's a better backup than ours, that's for sure. He was one of the guys I wish they would have got instead of Harris. Harris's age scared me, and it's proved to be true. He's out. He's not a guy that can run the ball where Evans, if he has to, he, he can get on his horse. He's got the age factor for him, and he's got an arm. We got lucky on a few plays. 
where he just put it right on the guy's mitts right in the end zone and dropped it. It was a game we should have won, that's for sure. I'll think about more things here and I'll put another video up. This one's probably getting pretty long. Me ranting away here. Anyway, again, like and subscribe and tell me what the hell we need to do different. You know, something has to change. Hope they open the books up more for fine. And it might be time already to start putting Dollar Gala in there for the odd series. Yeah, depends how things are going, but if Fine keeps performing like he did, I'm sure he made some good decisions and he has got a really good arm. I was actually surprised. You know, he can fit him into some pretty narrow spots, but a lot of those plays where he did do the action pass where he fakes and there was guys wide open. I'll show that too if I can find it again. He just couldn't see over the lineman and, and by the time he got a look down there, they got him by the throat. Anyway, till next time I'll get another video out here sometime this week after I go through and look at the, the game again. I hope I don't get as mad as I did last time. I was some worked up about this one. It's a game, again, uh, I didn't think we could stand a chance and we'd stay in it, so I should be happy, but I'm not. It was a game we should have won and could have won very easily. Three and three, I've said before, that's what I thought we'd be, is a middle of the road team. So what else can I expect? And I say maybe we get out of the East. Uh, I guess that'll be a big eye opener when we play Ottawa after Toronto, whether we even can get out of the East. Well, anyway, till next time, go Riders, go.